Hi, everybody. It's Doreen. And this is a very emotional topic for me. I don't know if I'm going to cry. I'm shaking right now because when I grew up in the 1970s, my best friend, Sylvia, and I, she's still one of my best friends, we would go to San Diego Sports Arena to go see Led Zeppelin. And we this was general admission time. So we would go to the front row. There wasn't any seats and stand there and just watch Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. And then as some of you know, I got into rock and roll by playing music when I was um, a new age teacher before I was saved. I had a band called Obsidian, which is a very dark name. And actually, I'm going to show you a clip of us playing a Led Zeppelin song called Kashmir that I was very into. This is back when I was blonde before I was saved. So anyway, that's my past. And um, I was very, very into rock and roll before I was saved. I would not listen to secular music or rock and roll these days. And we're going to talk about why. Um, this is not legalism. We're not being Pharisees. We know we're not saved by our works or what we listen to or not listen to. But once we're saved, we're given a new heart and a new life, and we want to be obedient. Um, as Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. So we'll talk about why that is. Our guest today is Pastor Joe Shamil, and he's been equipping Christians with the truth of God's word since 1987. Many of you will know him by his ministry, the Good Fight Ministries, and we're going to have the links to his uh, excellent videos and his podcast and his social media in the description below. Please do follow Good Fight. They are doing a good fight in Ephesians 5.11, exposing the darkness. Joe has a documentary that we will be showing clips from, but please watch the whole documentary. It's called They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll. Like me, Pastor Joe was saved out of darkness and rock and roll was a big influence on him. What we're going to learn today is how much Led Zeppelin, particularly uh, Jimmy Page, the lead guitarist uh, and the lyricist and the songwriter, was influenced by the satanic leader, Aleister Crowley. Now, some of you may know Aleister Crowley. He has compared New Age to Satanism. Uh, he was involved in tarot cards, which was something that I unfortunately was involved in. And he's, his work is something we want to stay away from. His symbolism can be seen in Led Zeppelin symbolism. Um, this, is, this is going down a dark path, but it's for our edification. So Pastor Joe, thank you so much for sharing the truth about Led Zeppelin and rock and roll for us today. Well, I'm happy to be with you, Doreen. And uh, just uh, as Ephesians 5.11 says, have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Uh, because Christians need to be aware of what's going on, because otherwise the church gets infected, and largely is. Most professing Christians are, you know, knee deep or up to their eyeballs in secular music, including bands like Zeppelin. Still, in fact, Zeppelin's an incredibly popular band even to this day, because a lot of the folks that are, you know, uh, the age of you and I, because I grew up, Zeppelin was my band, like it was your band, uh, and they turn their their kids on, and then they, even their grandkids onto their favorite music, and you go to, you know, high school. Uh, today and you don't you don't you see a lot of zeppelin shirts and shirts of those old bands and uh they still got they still get a lot of airplay and so forth and they've influenced a lot of the other bands so they definitely need to be exposed uh and and by exposing them it's like some people say well i don't really listen to zeppelin but you get an education as to how satan's working through all kinds of bands so it's very very good topic to talk about i was just blown away by your videos which we're going to show clips from and in the links below you can watch the whole videos about how Led Zeppelin IV, their fourth album, came on the heels of an unsuccessful third album. And on their fourth album, they featured occult symbols. Each of the band members chose a symbol and, and you can see them here. Uh, and it was one of the reasons that it was financially uh, and in a worldly sense successful. And it, that's the album that has the song we're going to focus on, The Stairway to Heaven. And when I was... Uh, a young teenager, I learned how to play Stairway to Heaven. I think everybody who had a guitar knew how to play the opening stanza of Stairway to Heaven. And, and I never even thought about the lyrics, but you break down that there's this lady and she's on this stairway, not to heaven, but to hell. Yeah, out of darkness, yeah, hell. So can we talk about Stairway to Heaven, just kind of dive in 
to some of the lyrics. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because uh, Jimmy Page, and it's interesting you mentioned that al- album Zeppelin 4. I mean, Zeppelin was so audacious in not needing the marketing. They knew the spirit they were in touch with. They, you won't, if you look at the cover of that album, as you're very familiar with, is you won't see a title. It was like an unnamed album. People started calling it Stairway to Heaven as an album, which was just one of the songs, but it was, it was also called Four Symbols. You mentioned there are four occult symbols. And that's, that's the audacity they had because they realized, man, we've got this, this, this spiritual realm with us. And Jimmy Page said, big names aren't made today through Ready, Steady, Go, but through practicing the magic of Aleister Crowley. And Aleister Crowley was very clear. Uh, he was a Satanist. He crucified frogs and we'd catch the frog and say, lo, Jesus of Nazareth, I have you under my power. And he taught members of his sex cult, which is still around today, called the OTO or Ordo Templi Orientis, uh, to do these rituals and to take mock communion. And this would be the most powerful form of magic, Crowley said, but you would take uh, human feces, sperm, urine, and so forth. And then you would put it into a wafer and you'd eat it. And he said that by doing this, you're partaking of Satan's body. So we're talking about him. So I mentioned a little bit of that because, I mean, he was into bestiality. He mentioned sacrificing several children. So he's talking about practicing Crowley's magic is how big names are made. And Crowley's magic is all about invoking spirit entities, demonic entities. Crowley said when he was a child, he believed that he was the beast already. And he signed his name, the Beast 666. And he was a Satanist organizer. And he talked about contacting. He said, I didn't want to just contact Satan. I wanted to become his personal chief of staff. So now when Paige says big names aren't made today through uh, Ready, Steady, Go, but through practice magic, Crowley, he's talking about practicing his magic, which was about invoking demonic entities. And certainly when they wrote Stairway to Heaven, Robert Plant said, you know, three quarters of the song came at, this, at, 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 uh, at, at once. And there was a running joke. What does it mean? In fact, a recent interview that's not on the, the clips is came out, not recent, relatively recent, since they broke up years ago, but in 2012, uh, they were talking about the meaning of Stairway to Heaven. And somebody could just, they could just Google that and they'll see the interview with Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, 2012, come with a meaning. And Robert Plant's kind of playing a little dumb, you know, and well, I don't know what it means and so forth. And Jimmy Page suggested he, you know, he, you got it through channeling, you know, uh, he uses the word channeling. And Robert Plant said many years ago, it came automatically. So we're talking about Jimmy Page, who uh, can't find a, a big enough occult bookstore, good enough occult bookstore in London, the leader of the biggest band at the time. Uh, so he opens up his own occult bookstore called The Equinox, named after Crowley's periodical, The Equinox of the Gods. We're talking about Zeppelin, where they write, as far as channeling goes, they're channeling Satan, really, because in their own words, in uh, House of the Holy, which before we, we came on together, Doreen, you mentioned that the influence that that had had on you, the album. But the, also, you know, the song was uh, separate than the album. There was no song on that album called House of the Holy, but came out later. They kept it out for interesting reasons. But when the song itself says, so your world is spinning faster. Are you dizzy when you're stoned? Let you, let the, let the music be your master. Will you heed the master's call? Then it says, literally Robert Plant sings Satan and man. So so how is Satan the master through the music? Only if he's being channeled and anybody listening can just Google uh, Mm -hmm. lyrics. How's the holy. And they'll see that it's going to say, so your world is spinning faster, you're dizzy when you're stoned, let the music be your master, we heed the master's call, and it will say Satan and man. The, even those who copy lyrics saying, yeah, but Satan and man. So Zeppelin was more than Zeppelin. Zeppelin was actually being used by Satan to influence millions and millions of people as, as are, because you and I know very well, Doreen, because we were both channeling stuff before we were Christians and uh, kind of very similar background I'm finding, you know, I didn't know you're all into Zeppelin. In fact, uh, I just, my wall, my room was wallpapered with Zeppelin, but you were actually, you know, on stage doing cashmere stuff. So that's kind of crazy, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, when we came to Christ, we realized what we came out of. And, and then we went, I'm sure you went through the same experience when you read Ephesians 6, 12, you know, we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we're called to expose that because we're not to be ignorant, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2.11, of Satan's devices. But so much of the church today is ignorant of his devices, where, you know, in Ephesians, uh, in the church at Ephesus, where these things are written, it warns about Satan channeling human beings in Ephesians 2. It talks about how Satan is a prince of the power of the air who guides the course of this world as he works through the children of disobedience. And that's why the church at Ephesus in Acts, the book of Acts, we read, in the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 19, that they burned all their books on magic. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, they would be they would be they would be highlighted today uh, if they were doing that today by the satanic panic group. Right. Mm-hmm. They'd be say, oh, look, this is satanic panic. That was led of the Holy Spirit. And that was a costly burn, too, because it says on the King James, it, cost, it was worth about 50,000 pieces of silver. And the New Living Translation, which brings it up in kind of more modern vernacular, were several millions of dollars. Right. That's the, they said, hey, we're going to get rid of this junk because mm-hmm. we know it's an evil influence. But today, the church needs shows like, you know, things that we do because so much the church has a spiritual cancer and they need to, it needs to be identified and eradicated from our lives. It does. Um, a lot of professing Christians, as you know, say that they can listen to secular rock and roll and be fine. But I don't know about you, but if I go into a store and it's playing, um, for me, it was both Led Zeppelin and Fleetwood Mac were both, you know, just big influences in the darkness of my pre-salvation life. But I'll get earworms if I hear these songs. And that almost seems satanic in itself, like part of a spiritual warfare. Yeah. I mean, to be, you know, I got to be radically honest, you know, is that I'll drive down the road and because of my old life, if. I have to roll up the window. I have to put on Christian music. If I hear, especially if I hear something like, you know, I play guitar too. So uh, when I became a Christian, I kicked in my amp because I was channeling lyrics and I kicked in my amplifier, got rid of my guitar. And I didn't pick up a guitar for years later. A few years later, my wife got me one for Christmas, you know, and then I had to pray a lot, you know, and, yeah. and, and the lyrics were hard to come by compared to mm-hmm. when I was channeling and I'd make sure they're perfectly biblical and I'm a strong biblicist and, and uh, wrote some songs, you know, and that, that were Christ exalting. But uh, when I drive down the road, even to this day, if I hear a song, some of the songs, I, I use the term anointed demonically. Certain yeah. songs have a certain, like Hotel California, you mm-hmm. know, the guitar solo there, you can hear it, man, that the feel it's like, and you know what that's about? It's about going to hell and getting shut in, you know? And Anton LaVey was consulted, uh, but the road manager said that they were meeting with Anton LaVey at the time they did that album, The Eagles, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. And they were into, uh, you know, they were into, <laughs> Uh, a lot of occultism the term eagles came from, you know, the Indian uh, idea of, uh, you know, the Indian occult symbol. And uh, they just, so what I have to do if I hear that, and, and it's something I like, you know what, I have to, sh- clo- you know, if I'm, you know, I'm in mm-hmm. hot California. Sometimes you, I just remember having that experience, hearing that song and yeah, saying, man, yeah. I got to get that out of my head. And then, you know, I just start singing praise songs until, you know, it's, it, you know, resist the devil, flee from me, draw near to God, who draw near to you. But there's a spiritual war. And Satan uses music, and our, our audience needs to know that he's called the anointed cherub who fell, and he was created with tabrets, it says in Ezekiel 28 in him. In Isaiah 14, it says, he wanted to be like the most high God, but it'll be thrown down to the pit with his musical instruments. In the Hebrew, it's stringed instruments. Isn't that interesting? And he's an anointed cherub that fell, it says. When you go to Revelation 4 and 5, Doreen, as you know, it talks about the anointed, it talks about the cherubim, and it describes them. And then they lead the worship that spreads to the other angels and then the host of heaven and creation to worship Jesus. So they're the worship leaders. So Satan's a fallen angelic worship leader. And he wasn't content to be the worship leader. He wanted to become the, he wanted to be the senior pastor of heaven. He wanted God's spot, you know? Yeah, he did. And uh, God brought judgment upon him. But his demons are fallen angelic beings who are created higher than us. And they can channel through people. They can sing and everything else better than humans can. Which brings us to the record label of Led Zeppelin, Swan Song. Yeah. And how many times did I play, this was back when we had albums, so I'm really dating myself, yeah. where it's spinning and it's, it's. I thought it was Icarus, but that's Lucifer falling from heaven, isn't it? That angel that's yeah, fallen, it's, it's, going it's around. It's supposed to be of Apollo, you know, which sometimes okay. Apollo is used as a symbol of, uh, of Satan, but it's kind of, it's Swan Song. Now think about that. When you watch it spin, it's kind of interesting because before I was a Christian, I'm like, you look at it and you watch it spin on your turntable. He's like, you know, falling, you know, and right. Swan Song is your last gasp before death, you know, and they, that's their own label. They got away from Atlantic and started their own label called Swan Song, signed Bad Company and so forth and, and uh, called it Swan Song. And that was the Swan Song label of a fallen angel. In, in the album Presence, you oh, yeah. show the obelisk. And yeah. I remember having that album and just looking at those same pictures you show here in this clip. And I feel like how dumb was I that I did not see this picture of the teacher imbuking this satanic presence into little innocent children, which was exactly what had happened to us and to my yeah. um, friend me Sylvia. As well. Yeah, me as well. I mean, I, I didn't see it either until I became a Christian and my eyes were open. And 
there's a number of pictures where it's, it's, it's presence, right? But you see this presence, which is, uh, this, it's this, you know, as you said, obelisk, which is, uh, by the way, part of Crowley's uh, furniture in his, in his temple, you know? Uh, and you see it, uh, I'm not saying they're trying to duplicate it, but it looks like that's what they're trying to do. And you see it in all these different settings in human life. And it's their way of saying, you know, I believe that you, you, you can't escape Satan's presence. Uh, and then the most insidious one is the one you just mentioned, Doreen, is the one with a school teacher, an older school teacher. In a, in a, and isn't it interesting how this stuff has entered into the classroom now, right? Mm -hmm. The occult, you can't teach the Bible, but you can teach transcendental meditation and stuff like that, which is Eastern mysticism. Yeah. And you have a teacher with one hand on the obelisk and one hand on the student as she's transferring the power, which by the way, it's interesting because Jimmy Page did an interview with William Burroughs and uh, this, in the interview, uh, William Burroughs was a, a leading, you know, literary, uh, won the Nobel prize in literature, but he wrote a lot on the occult, actually uh, claimed to be possessed by a demon. Uh, he killed his wife. He shot her in the head as a, he said he was aiming for an apple in Mexico oh, and God. killed her. And William Burroughs was, did an interview with Jimmy Page and, uh, you know, it's, which is interesting. A lot of people know Jimmy Page, but not William Burroughs. A lot of people know William Burroughs in that interview, but not Page. They're both celebrities in their own right. And he said it was after going to a Zeppelin concert that he coined the phrase heavy metal mm -hmm. uh, of, of the heavy metal genre. That's where that came from. But he said to Jimmy Page, and he's a practitioner of occult magic like Page, he said, when going to your concerts, he goes, I noticed this, there's a transmutation of energy from you guys to the fans. And he says, it's a lot like the Moroccan spiritists who invoke the spirit pan, you know, mm -hmm. and so forth. And it's interesting in that interview, Jimmy Page talks about how uh, he plays riffs in concert, which are meant to put people in a trance state. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these guys know what they're doing they often, do. not always, but oftentimes they do. Sometimes they're just ignorant. Yeah, you mentioned Pan when you talked about the Piper, which is a big part of the lyrics of Stairway to Heaven. Yeah, that's and right. And of course, here's a picture of Pan. We can see that he's got a little pipe horn and the horns of the devil, and that he he was a fertility deity, if I remember correctly. Yeah, connected to pedophilia. He's often put with little boys with an erection, I hate to say, but it's disgusting. Oh. Great and pictures. so how does that fit in with the lyrics of Stairway to Heaven then, with the Piper? Well, well, uh, it's interesting, it's, you know, because a lot of the song came through Robert Plant. Like I said, he, he said it came automatically. Uh, Was it so Robert Plant or Jimmy Page? Jimmy Page came out with the chords at Headley Grange Studios, and he said okay. he started playing the chords. And Robert Plant said he was in a very bad mood. He said, also, my hand started writing out words. This lady was sure ah. that this gold. She's buying a stairway to heaven. And it came out automatically. He used the word automatically. Interesting. And, uh, and that's why it became a joke. He didn't really know what they, what they meant. But. Uh, in the lyrics, you know, uh, is your, if your head is, you know, dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? You know, and did your, you, you know, your stairway lies in the whispering wind. It's kind of interesting because you and I were heavily into Zeppelin. Zeppelin didn't use songs that sounded like there was a, a pipe in the background, mm -hmm. but stairway to heaven through a synthesizer, they're using, you got the pipe sound, the sound of the piper. And it starts off with this flute kind of sound, a pipe. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. But that ends up being the number one song on FM radio of all time. Right. And and then the song all of a sudden it just builds and uh, you know, dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? And you know, your story lies in the whispering wind. Uh, he tells her, but at the beginning, he tells her that we, we read about this woman who thinks all that glitters is gold. And we know that she's, that's a lie. You know, mm -hmm. we, everybody knows all that glitters isn't gold and she's buying a stairway to heaven. You know, we know you can't buy a stairway to heaven. And uh, as she goes up this stairway to heaven, when she gets there, uh, she knows that the stores are all closed. She can get what she came for because she's Mrs. You know, she's Miss do what thou will. She's her own God. And it's interesting because she, when you open up to the album art, she's going up this mountain into darkness. And at the top of the mountain is not the Lord is not heaven. And it, what's there is the hermit of the tarot cards who represents occult knowledge or wisdom, which is Satan's knowledge. And that's all she ends up getting. But in the song, there's two paths, you know, there's two paths. It even says, uh, you know, there, there's, there's two paths, there's two roads you can go by. And one is the forest that echoes with laughter. That would be the heavenly path, the forest that echoes with laughter. It's much how the Bible describes the joy in heaven and it being tree of life on both sides of the river and so forth. And the other one that says the piper will lead us to reason. Now it's interesting for those who stand long, it's like Zeppelin is singing as though this is a separate group than us. For those who stand long, he said, he that endures the end will be saved. 
Those are the ones that inherit the four that with laughter, but it says, uh, but if, you know, tells a woman, if, you know, can you hear the wind blow? And I believe that's a reference to the pipe. Mm-hmm. And did you know uh, your stairway lies on the whispering wind and the whispering wind? Well, what's the whispering wind? In that song, it says, if it's whispered, there it is, that soon if we all call the tune, meaning what she's doing, right? The piper will lead us mm-hmm. to reason. And you have the Pied Piper of Hamlin, who the German tale where the Pied Piper uh, leads all the kids away mm-hmm. astray. Uh, you have uh, the, the, the Pied, uh, you have the, the Pipes of Pan. Crowley, who Paige follows, is heavily into the Pipes of Pan. And, and uh, he had the Pipes of Pan done at his funeral. He worshiped Pan in his, what he called his Gnostic Mass, which is interesting. And, but it's interesting because he's basically saying, dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? I believe he's referring to the blowing of the pipe sound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And did you know your stairway lies on the whispering wind? That's the path of the piper. In, the, in live, when they're doing it, uh, that song live, they would change the lyrics at times. Instead of telling, they're basically telling the woman, you're on the piper's path, you're going to outer darkness or hell. And they change it to, instead of dear lady, they'd sing, dear people, Robert Plant would sing, can you mm-hmm. hear the wind blow? And did you know our stairway lies on the whispering wind? I mean, well, it shouldn't be a shock, but I would now keep in mind, I'm a Zeppelin fan at the time. And uh, I have no idea what it means either. I become a Christian and I start looking at my own lyrics that I had written and realizing what I was writing. And I, cause I'm now I'm in the Bible and I'm praying. I'm like seeing this, this battle, you know, between uh, Christ and Satan. And, and of course it's no, Satan is no match for Christ. And then the spiritual, I mean, things that are behind it, like you know, even on that same album, they had the battle of evermore, right? You've got yep. the dragon of darkness, right? And all the, you know, and the prince of life, you know, blinds his eyes and so forth. And the, the spiritual war they were really uh, writing about. But I think a lot of these uh, bands, Zeppelin and many others, they recruited a lot of people that are in high places right now that have gotten, gotten the occult, got in touch with these powers and are being used way more than they were in the 60s. They just don't, they don't, uh, you know, now it's just more in your face, more blatant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's so frightening to think about this and the influence it has had on millions of people. Who yeah, amen. Just you drop your guard when you um, are listening to music. Uh, my friends and I, we would sing these lyrics without even thinking about them. Yeah. You know, we would just parrot them back. And then the scene from your documentary where Jimmy Page has a violin bow and he's pointing it at the audience, I clearly remember being in the front row of his concerts with him pointing the bow and thinking it was so cool, but it was really a satanic invocation, wasn't it? Absolutely. In our video, they sold their souls for rock and roll. We show Paige doing his deal and he, he's crouching a little bit. He's got the, you know, the dragon on his, uh, embroidered yes. on his pants, which I forgot the, about that dragon. That's right. Yeah. And then he's, you know, uh, he's crouching a little bit and he's like, darn during uh, Days and Confused, there's like a 26 minute version. Yeah. You know, it, it, when they put out uh, The Song Remains the Same in the late 70s, which was the biggest, it was a harbinger for MTV when they started doing all the music videos. It was before MTV, it was huge. And he also, you see Paige doing, you know, his deal, which is, you know, a bow. It's, you know, like a violin bow. And he's just rah, making all this strange music. And all of a sudden, you know, bam, bam. And then he crouches and he points the, the bow out to the audience. Yeah. And then boom, boom, he does it again. And he goes counterclockwise, the four points of the compass. Every time he goes, nah, 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 nah. and then there's a delay. Nah, nah. And then all of a sudden, and then what we show is that, guess what? Satanist Alester Crowley had a, a invocation for satanic powers called the sign of the enter, whereby you use your wand and you invoke these satanic powers by uh, going to the four points of the compass by pointing, by pointing to each point of the compass, uh, uh, the, the compass in a counterclockwise way, just as, Page was doing there at Madison Square Garden and other places right there on stage. He's practicing ritualistic magic, you know, invoking spirits. And, and I mean, on, on, Le- on Led Zeppelin three uh, on the runoff matrix, you know, you have do what thou wilt. And uh, every single Led Zeppelin three, I pull out, it's on one side of do what thou wilt, which was Crowley's satanic maxim. Do what instead of doing God's will do what thou wilt. Cause in Satanism, you're your own God, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, but do what thou wilt was on all these pressings of Led Zeppelin three, then you turn it over and it says, so mote be it, which is a spell, you know, mm-hmm. is, is the casting of a spell. So, you know, sometimes people say, yeah, you know, these magicians are casting these spells and they're over their music and so forth. And, and you hear stories like that a lot, but guess what? You see it right there on Led Zeppelin three. Yeah, so yeah. mote be it, you know? 
Yeah, he's not trying to hide. What about these chords? When when I played Kashmir with my band, I'd have to detune my guitar. And a lot of these chords um, that you hear, they almost have some, uh, some weird harmony. Um, I know there's some chords that back in the old days, the Catholic Church wouldn't let you play because they had some supposedly some satanic uh, sense to them. Did you do any research on the chord patterns? Uh, I've done uh, some research. What I found is I know in my own music before I was a Christian, obviously uh, I was tuning my guitar way differently and uh, a real, uh, very good guitar player in Simi Valley where I lived back in those days, who was in a pretty popular band in Simi. He picked up my guitar and he tried to play a little bit on it. He could barely stretch the notes because of my strange tuning because I tuned everything up, all the notes uh, harder. And But I was playing like very Eastern sounds. And I didn't know yeah. that this whole uh, invasion from the Eastern gods would be coming through Hinduism and mm-hmm. transcendentation and so forth, through the Beatles, through the Stones, through Zeppelin, Kashmir, and so forth. And, and they, they experimented with a lot of Eastern sounds. And that was kind of that invasion of the occult world musically, not just uh, teaching-wise, through teaching, you know, reincarnation and and, and power through occultism and, and so forth. And we can become God's all Satan's original lies, but the musical influence. And as I mentioned, Jimmy Page said that he would play uh, chord structures to put people in trances. I mean, that's an admission and so forth. There's so many layers to this. I mean, the, you know, the devil, he really is an evil genius, but he's, Absolutely. but he's not creative. He counterfeits. And so uh, it makes me wonder about Stairway to Heaven when we know about Jacob's ladder that of course the angels going up and down and then Jesus identifying himself as Jacob's ladder in the Amen. gospels. And the so gospels is, right is the stairway to heaven is an antichrist? Is it, is it really talking about the opposite of Jesus being the stairway to heaven? Yeah. I, I think that's a really good insight you just shared because in the gospel of John in the early chapters, you know, Jesus tells Nathaniel, he's a man without guile and so forth. He saw him under the sycamore tree and, and that blows Nathaniel away because it's like he knew exactly, you know, his situation because he mentions Jacob's ladder there. So he probably was meditating on that as a disciple. And it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a trip. And then he, he says to him, basically, you know, you'll see the son of man with the angels ascending and descending. So that's a good insight because you prefaced your remarks by, uh, by, you know, Satan's an evil genius, but he's not creative. He's a counterfeiter. Yeah. So a uh, Jesus is the way, the truth and life, you know? Amen. And the thing is, is we don't climb up Jesus, you know? Uh, to get to heaven, he's more like an elevator. We put our trust in him, right? So, but he's 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 Jacob's ladder, and he gives us the power to go to heaven through his sacrifice and resurrection. Where it's interesting, uh, you do have uh, Satan is a counterfeiter, and she's climbing her way. Like when you see uh, uh, in in the album cover, you open up Stairway to Heaven. We we'll call it that for the sake of it, but not having a name. She's climbing. She's sweating. She's working her way up, just like Paige is like working his way up when. It, during the song remains the same that 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 video where he's doing the occult ritual from Crowley shows him climbing the mountain and Crowley was like a mountain climber uh to me it's just you know it's it's you make your own way you save yourself you know thou well you do your own and to me the stairway is, is a counterfeit way of salvation is through your own effort and occult knowledge you can save yourself it, and it's definitely not salvation as you know I mean look at all these rock stars so many of them die young yeah uh I'm shocked that Paige is still alive right now, actually, having had a lot of, you know, times where he'd been on heroin and so forth. But there's no doubt about it that they are teaching, uh, you know, Aleister Crowley, the Satanist, you know, he taught a, you know, a, you know, a way of salvation, which was not true salvation. And uh, Thelema, they call it, you know, and that means will and the whole idea of do what thou wilt, which is kind of interesting because Crowley talked about how it sets you free. But then you look at this long list he had for his initiates that they had to follow the cult yeah. practices and, and how many people died under him or went insane and how many his wives and sexual lovers were just, you know, people dying of all kinds of things around him and so forth. And even he admitted later in his life that he didn't even practice his own religion, which is interesting, you know? Mm-hmm. So it is a, it's a workspace, uh, you know, but there's power in it. You know, Doreen, you and I know that we, those, this is what people don't realize when they see people that are in the occult. They don't realize that a lot of these people that are practicing this magic are contacting spiritual entities and having spiritual experiences. And then when you're trying to talk to them as a Christian, you have to realize that they've, 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 they've seen something, they felt something often through practicing, whether it's meditation, which is a really quick way 
how about Eastern meditation to pick up a spirit guide? Mm -hmm. They've had all, that's how I open myself up. I wasn't seeking Satan and occult practices. At first I was reading books on the power of the subconscious mind. And I just started visualizing my success. And before I knew it, you know, I'm going through a state of paralysis. Yeah. yeah and uh, I was a channeler before I was saved. And so I was known Praise for- Praise God you're saved. <laughs> oh, it's God's complete mercy and grace. I, it was and, so, because I thought I was a Christian, but I was doing all this occult stuff. But I, I just kind of wonder if I was set up by the Led Zeppelin concerts and the music that I was just so obsessed with, because- um, I was super successful. I was the time I was saved in 2017. I was the top selling new age author in the world. And wow. I, was, I was treated like a rock star. My husband and I were flown first class all around the world to sold out audiences. You know, we were making tons of money, but we were like rock stars. We were spending more than we were making. Right. You know? So we were like a behind the music story, you know, just, huh. it was just, it was so awful, but I'm I'm just wondering because I was so immersed in Jimmy Page if that was an influence on why I became a channeler of the, the devil masquerading as an angel of light. Yeah, you so mentioned Jimmy Page and you mentioned earlier during uh that your the other band you were heavily into was uh you know uh Fleetwood Mac. You know, Fleetwood Mac with Stevie Nicks, right? Yeah, and Stevie almost- Nicks was one of my heroes. I would go to again, I would go to the concerts up until probably 2016 or 2015, so till recently. And I would go up to the front of the stage and I would just try to make eye contact with her. And I would go, I would fly to go see her. I saw her in Australia, I saw her all around the US. Not and on a I dressed right? what's that? Not on a broom when you fly, right? No, no, I was actually <laughs> anti witchcraft. She, she is a witch, you know. I I actually was anti witchcraft as uh, ironically as a New Age teacher. I I would stay away from pentagrams and and regular tarot and anything witchcrafty. No Harry yeah, probably, Potter. We, you're probably against Ouija boards. Oh, completely. Yeah, isn't yeah. That, that's part of the deception, though. When you know what I'm saying? Is yeah, no, I, I was because they're against certain things because they don't want you to get involved in these dark spirits. It's a big deception. I had the blonde hair like her. I would dress like her. I first saw Stevie Nicks in the 1970s in San Diego, again, at a, a con- outdoor concert. And she that's back when she was young and she was with Lindsay Buckingham. And, yeah. and I was just enchanted with her. I've got some clips of me playing Fleetwood Mac songs with my band. And uh, I just, I, I wonder also the influence they had because Stevie Nicks, as you're mentioning, she, she was uh, kind of a witch herself. She's, she sung about Rihanna. Yeah, Rihanna's a witch. witch. You're exactly right. Welsh yeah. witch. Yeah, in fact, if, you, if people look at her albums, if they have her albums before you, I encourage you before you break them and get rid of them because you ought to, I believe, uh, but pray about it. You'll see she has crystal balls on most all of Fleetwood Mac's albums. You know? Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone has a, just about has a crystal ball on it. Uh, she literally, you know, dresses like a witch. Rihanna mm-hmm. is just one of the songs where she, you know, uh, glorifies a, a, a witch. She also talked about when she was on stage. We have a section, our 10-hour version on Fleetwood Mac. But she talked about the members of the band that she said, I don't know what it is, but we're moved around on stage like we're pawns, in, in, like on a chessboard. She talks about how we're like pawns that get moved around. She felt these forces. And, and you were into, and, and I think this is a really good learning experience for the people that are listening is, is you and I, when we opened the door to the occult, we didn't like, oh, how can I get involved in Satanism? A lot of no. people are doing that. Of course, I was getting into the power of the subconscious mind. You were getting into what you thought was more of a benign form of, of, of like maybe white magic at first or just, or just new age. Yeah, I, wouldn't even call, I wasn't even calling it that. It was, yeah, all, that. It was angels. I was all into God. I thought they were God's angels getting messages from them. And they yeah. all seemed to be very positive, but it was Satan mas- masquerading as an angel of light. And I was Absolutely. the worker of inequity of 2 Corinthians eleven fifteen. 15. But that brings me to my next question, Pastor Joe. What about so-called Christian heavy metal music? Yeah, you know, uh, I got, <laughs> I'll give you my own opinion. Please, please. For, and, and then I'll go appeal to scripture. And then everybody has to apply scripture the way they believe it truly applies to their lives is for me personally, okay, I don't know where to draw the line musically as far as what tell, as far as the musical style to tell people. Like, how do you draw the line at Keith Green or at four four timing or before it or what? You know. Uh, so I know for myself personally that first and foremost I go to the scripture as far as lyrically. You know, if they speak not according to the word. It's because there's no light in them. Some people might be saying, well, a lot of these artists we look, are into 
you know, ah, oh, it's just music. Oh, it's, well, the Bible says, you're very familiar with these scriptures, I'm sure, Doreen, that we're not supposed to seek mediums. Mm-hmm. When you have so many of these artists in our video, they sold their souls for rock and roll. We show, I mean, it's not just me talking. We show all kinds of clips where the artists themselves are admitting that they're mediums, that they're channeling spirits and so forth over and over again from, you know, John Lennon saying when he wrote songs, he's like a medium, like being possessed, like being psychic uh, and had to come out of him and so forth. And uh, on and on and on. We talked about, you know, Robert Plant recently or a little bit ago too, is the Bible says we're not supposed to be mediums. And a lot of these musicians are mediums. So uh, when it comes to, I look at, so I look at lifestyle. I look at lyrics. If they don't speak according to his word, if, if, because music, by the way, the most repeated command in scripture by far and away is sing to the Lord. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, by far and away, Old mm-hmm. New Testament, you go to your concordance, you get this page after page. And because singing is such a spiritual thing and it's so important to the Lord. And he said, the Bible says, you know, sing the Lord. And it says to, to praise him all the time. That's I don't right. have time for secular or occult music. And it says to let the meditations of my, the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord. I don't want to be singing about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know, I want to be glorifying the Lord. So when it comes to the, the lyrics, I say, does it glorify the Lord? And then when it comes to musical style, you know, the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about musical style, but it does say, sing with grace in your heart to the Lord. I don't find a lot of musical expressions, a lot of the rap music, a lot of the metal music as a, an expression of grace. A lot of times it's haughty, it's arrogant, it's, it's dark, it's, mm-hmm. you know, evil, it's proud, like a lot of the rap music. And I'm not saying, hey, oh man, he said I can't listen to any Christian rap. I'm not saying that. I have to take that between you and the Lord because I'm very careful as a pastor not to put legalistic things where I say you can't That's do right. this unless I can show a scripture. I can say this, don't commit adultery, don't fornicate. <laughs> I can say that's right there in the scripture. Yeah. As far as musical expression, I, I preface my remarks by saying, for me personally, I have a hard time personally with a lot of the so-called thrash metal. A lot of it seems so angry. I know other Christians who I love and I believe love the Lord who say, I think it edifies, it builds me up and so forth. And it's like, well, that's me between you and the Lord, bro. You know, <laughs> I remember driving down the road, you know, in, uh, in, in my car and, and I was listening to a certain artist. And, and then as I'm listening to one of his songs, it was just, you know, just very dark chords and strong and hard. And I found myself, you know, just in a place where it felt like my old life before Christ. Ah. And it was just like, like headbanging type music. I wasn't thinking of Christ. I was thinking of myself and, you know, and at that point during, during the music, like, oh, this is just so rad. I'm like, wait a minute, man. I was just glorifying Jesus. And now I'm in this music being drawn into a space where I don't want to be. I hit eject. I threw it out the window. Probably shouldn't have littered, but I don't want to be tempted to play that, put that back in, you know? And then at that time I made a conscious decision, you know, and it wasn't metal. It was just, you know, that was a hard rock song. And I'm not saying that that's, you know, each person to me, it's like a Romans 14 issue as far as musical expression. So I don't judge people if they do. I just let each person be expired. It's, uh, you know, convinced in their own mind. Mm-hmm. So for me, I have a much tighter line and maybe a lot of, because of what I came out of, I'm really sensitive, you yeah. know, Same here. To touch the enemy's stuff with a 10 foot pole. So yeah. I even watch a lot of Christian stuff very carefully, you know? Yeah. Same here. I just have a real appetite for the classic hymns. So, Amen. you know, let's do you just, like do you like Shane and Shane? I, I even, I like the more classic <laughs> than that. I like, holy, holy, holy. Oh yeah. You know? No, they do a lot of those, but they do them in such a beautiful Way, they, it, okay, and then I'm I'm hypersensitive if they have any connection to Bethel or Hillsong or Elevation. I'm not going to even go with them because I know Amen. that's efficient. Amen. Amen. We will not let our worship leaders play Bethel. <laughs> we we do not allow that played in our church. Good. You know, good. Praise the or Lord. Or we have a 24 seven Christian radio station with different Leonard Ravenhill and Ray Comfort and others. You know, nice. And uh, we don't allow any of that stuff in our radio station either. And we have music, so. Praise the Lord, sister. It shows me that you're, you know, you're serious and we got to be, you know? Yeah, no, you have to be. This is, this is a salvific issue. And I was this close to going to hell because I was a senior citizen when I was saved. I'm 64 now. And I was saved, what, at age 58 or 59. And so, I mean, it's by God's grace and mercy that I'm not hell bound anymore. And, Praise God. Amen. And, and you know what? And, it's not like, well, what sounds good? What for me, it's like, how can I best glorify the Lord? And that's, that's right, where right. our joy should be, you know, and, and, uh, when I mentioned Shane and Shane, it was because they do so many of the old hymns so well, oh, you know? they, I have to check them out. I've been just kind of listen. I listen to RefNet radio. It's my only station. Hey, I listen go down to. the road and just, okay. you know, what you're driving, just put, just ask Siri, say, 
put on Shane and Shane okay. live, <laughs> live hymns and she'll say Shane and Shane live hymns, you know, live him. <laughs> okay. Like, I will. You'll hear, you know, you're how great thou art and you yes. know, is he worthy or, you know, or he is worthy. You yeah. Know? I love those songs. Watching the videos of from your documentary brought back a lot of memories of going to Led Zeppelin concerts. David Bowie. That's yes, right. He was very feminine. Right. You had mm-hmm. uh, all the long, guys growing long hair, you know, yep. Crowley yep. talked about, you know, uh, the uh, men with their hair long, all, it's just kind of weird stuff that he talked about. And he said, let me seduce the boys of Eng- uh, uh, the, 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 the boys into sodomy and so forth. And he targeted the United States. He said, they'll go after his teaching in the sixties. He was the unsung hero the Beatles top left one guy over yeah. uh, Alester Crowley. He's everywhere. The doors are huddled around him in their album 13. And he pushed a lot of this whole, and you mentioned androgyny, the whole Baphomet symbol, right? Is yeah. It's the male with the phallus, but it's also got the, the, the breast women's yeah. breast, and mm-hmm. it's a depiction of Satan from, from uh, Levi. Right. And then uh, uh, Crowley ended up using that same symbol. So when you get to even the, the you know, Come on, the biggest bands, you're looking like the Rolling Stones. Mick Jagger would wear mascara. Mm-hmm. He had a big inflatable phallus that he would play, we jump on on stage mm-hmm. and stuff sick. So Robert Plant was doing just what they were doing. And I had all these, which is really interesting that you say that because I, after I got saved and years went by and I started to think about how my dad would come in and he would look at my posters and he'd just like shake his head. And I didn't realize what he was shaking his head on about. So, you know, at the time, because I, I knew he couldn't handle my music, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he'd come in and say, that's strange stuff, you know, as I'd be listening, like you, sh- I remember I was listening to you shook me, not ACDC's version, yeah. uh, Zeppelin's version, he, right. it, you know, with plant mimicking the guitar yeah. he came in and he goes, that's, and he's like drinking, you know, he's before he got saved and I wasn't saved. Of course. And he's like, that's strange stuff. But you look at my posters. He goes, he like was disgusted. And I, I don't know if that was a long hair, but I had long hair. And then it's funny you say that because I thought, wow, now I look about it. Like Robert plant looked kind of, it looked very effeminate. Because like you're saying, he had the he'd have the hiked up shirt, he had the tied in the knot, you know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They were basically mm-hmm. that's what Crowley pushed, though. He pushed mm-hmm. pedophilia, even. You know? Well, it, I mean, it's like how you talked about the cover of Houses of the Holy with the children yeah. again climbing. It's that whole theme of climbing. But then I didn't even realize till I saw your documentary, Pastor Joe, about the child sacrifice image. Yeah. In this. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's yeah. just so. It's and when so you think evil, of, you know, waiting on Satan's, or when you think of the song Houses of the Holy. If that song, I thought, why did they wait to put that out? They already had it done. They waited an album. But if you put this, if you put that song with the album, they're talking about, you know, heeding your master's call through music, Satan and man. Right. And then you look at that, you have these kids and they're from a distance. They look because they're all pink, like they're naked. It's yeah, almost yeah. like they have these little pink bodysuits on or something. They're climbing up into this castle. And then, yeah, you open it up and the spotlights on this naked man from the back with one of these limp children in his hands. And Crowley talked about, he made it real clear that we're to, mm-hmm. that, you know, we say this, he said, you know, to sacrifice the most effective sacrifice, he said, is a male child with great, of great intelligence. And he confessed that he, he committed several of these sacrifices. And I think it's important for us to pray for those who are lost, including Amen. those who are famous and lost. A lot of people prayed for me, um, in which Praise I'm so God. grateful for. And they would share the gospel with me, even though I would get offended. So I just, you know, the it's up to God's will. <laughs> and our, our role is the great commission, which I know that your ministry, the good fight ministry is very involved in sharing the gospel and evangelizing to the lost. So thank you for the work you're doing. Praise God and, and, and praise God that uh, for what you're doing and Lord, give, make us stand and give us strength. 